Did you know you can bind a controller to OBS? I'm currently using a gamepad to start my recording because I apparently hit every single key on my keyboard at some point. So anyway, hello my loyal subjects and welcome! Um, I recently just figured out that, because I was trying to find a key that I didn't use, and I looked at my keyboard and I realized I use every single key at some point. So yeah, anyway, um, let's dive in, and I want to show a little quick tip for laying out a material. So a lot of times in Substance Designer, um, we can often have a problem where we want a certain material with a set of outputs, and it can be a bit of a pain in the ass, to lay them all out manually and set them up and everything, it can just be a huge pain. So, on the other hand, if we just select an empty graph, we go in, we can name it whatever we want. I want to say this is a stone material. This is a stone material. Now, I want to do this with, um, I want to do this with base color, metallic, and so on. You know, I want to do all that, and I want to have height and ambient occlusion. Normally, you'd have to go and you'd have to choose a physically based material, and then you'd have to manually go add them, and it's a huge pain in the ass. On the other hand, if I go and I add a base material, or uh, you can either go to a base material, or if you want a little bit more freedom and a little bit more control, you can actually go in here to something called a material blend. Now, the reason why I say material blend is because if we go under channels, you can toggle what channels this thing has. So I can say, like, okay, I want it to have base color, I want it to have normal, I want it to have ambient occlusion and height. Then you can just right-click it, go to Create, Output Nodes. Create hidden uh, nodes for hidden connectors? Nope, because we only want the ones we've just shown. And boom! There are outputs. Those are lovely, lovely outputs. Look at that. Look at those glorious outputs. We've just output several images just by right-clicking and create. You can also do the same thing with input nodes. So, for example, if I wanted to, I could simply go in here, and if I wanted to blend two materials together, I could, but I can also go in here, do like a material adjustment layer, which only has one set of inputs, and I can just, again, set up which ones I want. Um, let's go in here. I can right-click, create input nodes, However, we're going to get an extra one in here, grayscale mask. And you can see we've already got these nicely set up. And then I can just delete the node. And look, I've got a lovely set of inputs. Also, if you're feeling rambunctious, you can then go in, save it as a template. You can save it somewhere. Just literally just go hit Control S, save this somewhere. And if you want to reuse it, you can go and go to your, I think it's under Tools, Preferences, Lie, no, it's under Projects. And you go under here, and you'll be able to find, if you scroll down to Library, you can actually link a little file by clicking this little plus button. We can then select where we want our substances to be drawn from and pulled into our library. But we can also scroll up a bit, and we can look for Templates. Over here at Template Directories, we can click the plus button, and choose where we want our templates to be picked up from. In my case, I want my templates to be picked up from there. So, in this case, you can see we've got ourselves a lovely little project set up. And now, when I go to create a new graph, you'll notice I've got my own little templates drop down. That's the file that I use. And here we are. Look at this. Look at this gloriousness. It's got all the material maps that I usually use. And uh, yeah, hopefully, this has helped you get started in Substance Designer a little bit quicker, and uh, yeah, peace out. Kthuluftaken. I'm gonna pick up my gamepad and click the back button. This is like the least obtrusive way to stop a recording. <laughs> peace out. Have fun, guys.